Today, we are going to understand how the motor control design suite works. This tool inside PSIM is an add-on module allowing people to design the control loop of any motors in a couple of minutes. First operation is to open PSIM and click into the design suites tab and motor control design suite section and go through each of those templates. So this module includes several templates allowing people to set up the control loop with torque and speed control algorithm, for example. Indeed, pre-built design templates are provided for linear and non-linear PMSM and induction machine with sensorless or sensor control. The goal right now is to show you how to design an optimized motor drive for a 100 kilowatt PMSM. As you may know, control loop design of PMSM drive could ask some efforts and time for the engineer. It involves the design of the inner current loop and outer speed loop. Moreover, users need to take into account the non-linearity of the motor and other factors, such as switching frequencies, sampling frequencies, motor and drive efficiencies. At the end, to achieve the optimum performance, advanced control algorithm needs to be developed and implemented. So the motor control design suite into PSIM make all the tasks very easily and help users to save time. Based on minimum specification, the motor control design suite automatically design all the controllers for speed and current loops with proper specified crossover frequencies and stability matching and with advanced control algorithm such as maximum torque per ampere, field weakening control, and maximum torque per volt control. It will, at the end, generate a complete system that is operational and ready to simulate in a minute. So let's do this. And for doing this task, I have opened the PMSM IPM drive GMAG RT template. So I have opened this one and we will go through each part of the simulation during this video. So let's start with the PMSM now. So the PMSM here is modeled by using GMAG RT tool. A GMAG RT model is derived from the GMAG finite element analysis software. This tool helps to deliver very high level of fidelity and accuracy as compared to the actual linear motor, taking into account all the non-linear effects, such as saturation and spatial harmonics. So this RT model is in reality a kind of lookup table. As this template uses non-linear motor, the D-axis and Q-axis inductance are function of the motor current ID and IQ and those nonlinear inductance LD and LQ are obtained from the GMAG RT model in real time and they are fed back to the various control blocks to achieve the optimal control performance. So now if you open the RT model you just need to load the RTT file and then all the specification of the motor will be automatically read by the model and implemented there. But also, you can see on the parameter panel window that the main specification of the motor have been extracted from GMAG RT it itself, like RS, LS, LD, LQ, the back EMF KE, the number of poles, the amount of inertia, and the mechanical time constant. So one key point is if you don't know how to extract this back EMF parameter value, you can still use PSIM. So for example, you will need to create this kind of open circuit with a constant speed of 1000 RPM as a mechanical load and simulate this circuit. Of course, you need to load the RTT file. And at the end of the simulation, you will be able to obtain KE, which is in fact the back EMF. So in our case, KE is around 80 
0.8, so which is in fact the bar KMF. So now let's go back into PSIM main simulation and just fill in the bar KMF parameter value. Now, if you look into the entire system, you will find the voltage source. It is in fact the DC bus. You will have also the inverter model, the current sensor, which are needed to measure the different current feeding the motor, the PMSM from RT model, the mechanical load, including the speed sensor. And at the bottom, you can see the complete control algorithm. So you will find the speed controller subcircuit, including one PI block. You will have also the advanced all-in-one block, including MPTA, field weakening control, and MPTV. And finally, you have the current controller, including some PI. Then we finally have the generation of the several PWM, which will feed the inverter. And on the left side, you can see the parameter panel window, including the main parameters to tune in order to design correctly the control loop of the motor. You can find the description of those parameters into the parameter file block, just there. Also, you have to decide the proper values of the switching frequency, this value, the sampling frequency of the current loop, the sampling frequency of the speed loop. And also, you need to define the crossover frequencies of the current loop and the crossover frequencies of the speed loop. So, typically, in general, F, C, or I should be chosen like the sampling frequency divided by 10. And F, C, or W should be chosen like F, C, R, I divided by 10 as well. So, of course, you can still adjust those values depending on the speed of the loop that you want to design. But in our case, we have defined the values like this. Then you need to click on the button update parameter file in order to update the system parameters for the simulation. So the parameter file contains the parameters entered by the user and the one calculated by the design suites. Indeed, the parameters of the current loop and the speed loop controllers are calculated automatically, saving users a lot of time and effort in designing the controller themselves. So if any of those parameters inside, inside the parameter panel are changing, you have to click on update parameter file again to update all these values. So, as you can see, all the PI values and other needed parameters are calculated automatically for feeding the control algorithm part. And one very interesting thing is the speed torque curve button. So, once all the input parameters are entered, click on this button and you can see directly the torque and power against the speed of the motor. So based on the parameters you are filling, this button will automatically show you the maximum torque and power depending on the speed applied. Of course, you can still modify the DC bus and inverter current, and you will see how the changes affect those curves. And as you can see, thanks to the control algorithm implemented, we can still have torque and power in high speed region. So before to run the simulation with switching model for the inverter, we can firstly use the average model. 
as you may know, by using the average model, the effect of switching will not be taken into account, and therefore the focus will be on getting well-designed control loops. Also, the simulation with the average model is much faster. Finally, you also need to adjust to tune the sampling frequency of the current, of the speed, and the cross surface frequency of the current and of the speed, and the simulation time step to achieve the desired performance. And once the system works with the inverter average model, you can definitely change the inverter model and back to the switching model to validate the design. So, for example, click on the inverter model and change it to average model. And now you have to disable this PWM block and enable this label in order to fed directly this average model. And now you can run the simulation and observe the performance of your system. If that is fine, you can go back to the switching model. If not, you can still adjust as mentioned these different parameters. So now let's run the simulation with the inverter switching model. But for that, you need to go back to the previous model. It was an ideal one. And you have to enable these blocks and disable those labels. So if needed, you can still tune the value of frequencies if you think there are still some small miscalculation. And one key simulation waveform is to watch the modulation signal VMA at the input of the PWM block. This waveform VMA should not be out of the range of the carrier wave. So in our case, we have set it to 1. So the signal should be between 1 and minus 1. If so, the control is well designed. So now we can directly click on this button in order to run the simulation. And after, we will get those results. If you remember well, we have set a speed reference to 6,000 RPM. So it means the motor should reach 6,000 RPM at the steady state. So now, if I go back to the simulation result, you can see directly the speed and M, which is around 6,000 RPM into the steady state. We can see also the different current, which are all sinusoidal as expected. We can see also the torque ripple due to the special harmonics. And we can see that in the steady state, our torque is fall down directly. And we can see the VMA, which is between 1 and minus 1. So the control is working well. And also, before 0 0.6 second, the drive operates in MPTA. And then after 0 0.6 second, the drive operates in field weakening control. So this flag helps users to know if we are in MPTA or field weakening control. Now, the next step is, if you want, you can still change the value of the reference speed. But you need, before to simulate, just click on update parameter file and all the needed parameters for the simulation will be automatically calculated. Once you can simulate again, and now if you look at the result, you can see that the speed here is reaching our 4000 RPM. Again, we still have the current which are sinusoidal. The torque also is decreasing in steady state. This is normal. VMA is still between 1 and minus 1. And in our case, we are always in MPTA. Why? Because as I showed you, 
before. If you click on speed door curve button, you can see that before this speed, 4,400 RPM, we are in MPTA. And then we are going into field weakening control and then MPTV. But in our case, as we have set the maximum speed to reach is 4,000 RPM, the drive operates in MPTA algorithm. So the drive is correctly working. So to conclude, with the motor control design suite and the GMAG RT model, engineers can quickly set up and simulate a PMSM drive that takes into account all the non-linearities of the real motor. And this greatly helps motor design engineers and control engineers in evaluating the motor performance in a motor drive environment. And finally, help hardware engineer in designing and sizing the inverter. <laughs>